right, today we're jumping into the SEC versus the big bad wolf at Coinbase. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. Lisa, you're in the co-pilot today. That's right. Today's going to be a big day in crypto news with this SEC coming in full force. Yes, they are. I love Here it, we go. though. This is always, you know, prize fights are always fun to watch, you know. Especially from the sidelines. I'm thinking like Mayweather and Connor. This is kind of what reminds me of. Uh, Tyson this. Holyfield? Yeah, no, not that, not old <laughs> school. I'm talking about the new the new kids. Listen, this is the SEC. I don't know, man, ears getting bitten. <laughs> oh, it seems, uh, seems about right over here. Yeah, right. The SEC is going at uh, Coinbase. We're gonna dive into it a little bit today. Before we get into that though, I wanna take a look at the market on, of course, our favorite CoinGecko. We have ditched the boys at Binance and CoinMarketCap. Peace out. <laughs> See you later. Uh, anyway, market cap currently at 2.2 trillion, so it's up a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. 24 hour trading volume, 132 billion. 40% on the Bitcoin market cap dominance. What do you think about that? I'm kind of curious. Listen, I think that- I've seen people go up and down on, on Bitcoin dominance. Yeah, but I think that 47K was a, uh, a line of resistance. And the yeah. fact that we breached that is an indication. It's a, bullet, it's a bullish indicator. Yep. Um, I'm not you know, putting too much stock in the short term bullish run but you know long term i mean uh folks are still you know uh so you don't think this is the jump into the next layer maybe I'm we're not gonna, sold we're gonna yet. do a video on i'm that not sold sure. yet all right yeah, all right I'm so you're still yet. a little skeptical mm -hmm. i like it 47.9 for bitcoin as of filming today here on ethereum at 3400 and hopefully going to clip into the 3500 uh, this week, this is unusual movement for early week too. And then of course, Cardano is still a little bit soft on this. And we've had some discussion about Cardano. It's an interesting project. I was a little bit, I can I think I was a little bit let down with what they Underwhelmed did, yeah, by the, with, uh, the with hard the fork. Yeah. But we'll get into all that. Let's You're not the only one. Well, exactly. I, and, and full disclosure, you guys are not going to like this. I dumped my entire bag of Cardano uh, <gasps> this week. Did you? Yeah. That seven-day moving average will get you every time. Well, it was, uh, you know, I took it at, at a good time, but the, the key for me was, and, and has always been, I know this isn't a Cardano talk, but uh, it has always been, they had to show me the roadmap. And what the roadmap got revealed was is that this is going to take a while. Yep. So there's going to be some buying opportunities. So it's a good thing to go take your profits, mm -hmm. come back in, and sure enough, you could have uh, come back in at Cardano at around 240. And, you know, maybe that's a new entry point for you to take another ride up the elevator. We'll see. But I think it's important to make the distinction that um, if you're long, it's it's a good long-term investment. I think that they yes. will get it together. No doubt. Um, and so good project. if you're short-term, then uh, this might not be the trade for you in the immediate future. But... Yeah. Uh, Buying the dip is always a uh, is always a good yeah. rationale, a strong rationale in buying the dip. I so. don't want to get into to that tremendously in terms of the the Cardano topic, but there are some pundits out there mm -hmm. that are looking at this project much differently now, actually on the bad side. Mm. And um, I won't go into it. I'll just say go check out Crypto Chico. There you go. He's going to kind of give you some insights, and he's done a lot of research on where kind of the project for Haskell, because Haskell is obviously the platform in which you're driving on in terms of development. That in itself is and could be one of the limiting factors for Cardano. But let's jump over to SEC. Yeah, the, the chair. Of epic proportion, might I add. Yeah, Coinbase lists dozens of tokens that might be securities. This to me is, oh, Brian. You think you're going to slap me down on Twitter? On tw I don't think so. Wow. Yeah, that takes a lot of chutzpah to, to say what he said, but he said what he said. Yeah. And uh, Gensler is making it very clear that he is taking he is. no prisoners. I can play there. I can play there with that. Let me jump in. Go get your playbook from the XRP boys and Ripple and uh, Mr. Garlinghouse, and we'll see how it rolls out. We'll, you know. Personally, though, I think that with Brian, he's got, uh, he's got an ace in his, in his corner. He's got an ace in his corner. Yeah. Tell us more. It's Mr. Cuban. Ah, he's got, two billionaires. The billionaires for billionaires. Yeah, and he's got the playbook of how to beat the SEC. Yep. So, But anyway, let's dive into dozens of tokens that might be on the current Coinbase that might be security. So <sighs> he just scared a whole bunch of newbies in crypto mm -hmm. by that statement alone that says, wait a minute, there's a whole bunch of these coins out there that are Coinbase is out there just flaunting and giving it up 
that they are securities, and we're going to shake, shake them all down. I mean, this listen, feels like the mob. You know what, though? Um, <laughs> when you see, look, the government wants their money. You know, like, one way or another, there's going to be regulations, and, you know, the industry is just going to have to comply. The thing about this case is that this is, this is a precedent setting. Right. You know, we talked a lot about XRP, but this is moving into the exchange arena yeah. where, you know, listing tokens now that might be considered derivatives Getting swimming in those waters right. is very problematic. Well, and the the issue, just to be clear, that the, the it is not a case yet. This is still the SEC. It's posturing, a conversation. Posturing in the sense of saying, "Hey, guys, we need to talk." And of course, there's been some things because Coinbase has actually tried. They actually talked to them about their Lend product. I'll show you a little bit of yeah in advance. And that was the thing that the SEC had said that you know they invite. Uh, crypto companies to come have conversations, ask for permission versus forgiveness, and and I think that's what kind of infuriated you know Armstrong that like he they went to the SEC right, and right. they said these are our intentions and this was the backlash. Yeah, here was was Gensler's remark notable given that it did not come in response to a direct question about securities but instead as an aside while replying to a query from Senator Warren. So it was <sighs> like hey. I'm, done, I'm not even asking you this question. You're just giving this information up. Oh, by the way, we think there's other securities out there that Coinbase is uh, also shilling that uh, is a problem. I think that this is a case of you need to kowtow. Really? The cryptocurrency industry needs to kowtow to government uh, with the SEC at the helm. Oh, my Lord. I mean, I, well, I hate to heard, say it, but, you, heard you know. That. Guys, don't don't <laughs> torch me in the comments. That was Lisa said that. Lisa I mean, listen, that. I think that, you know, uh, regulation is uh, inevitable. And I think, again, from a regulatory standpoint, the SEC is trying to wrap their hands around this. And they're going to make it a very public yeah, battle. It is, it is one, I think, that they are trying to position in the sense of, hey, listen, we're the big guy. We are the ones that could, should be controlling these elements. There are, there are, and is a ton of arguments both from a uh, legislative angle but also from a legal position because mm -hmm. i've talked to many attorneys already on a lot of these projects in many cases we'll consult uh, our attorneys friends of our channel about different projects and one of course we always talk about is xrp and what ripple is doing sure but in in essence there's a lot of other projects out there that kind of you know skirt that fringe of sure. centralized non-decentralized projects that could fall into securities realm. So that's Paul, be this is one. regulation by enforcement. Yeah. That's what uh, that's what um, Cuban said. Yeah. You know, is this is the typical, you know, hey, let's just go out and do this in advance so it pushes the regulation down to where it falls into our court, which is not a good thing. I don't I don't necessarily believe that this is something that we should do in the sense of if you're in the crypto community right now and and I know that uh, you know, Rob over at Digital Asset News talked about this the other day, and he mentioned, he said, hey, well, you, you've got Kraken, Coinbase, sure. Voyager, and the likes, BNB. Um, everybody throws in, you know, a few million, and you just take them, you do a full, you know, group action lawsuit and go at the SEC for this in terms of unfair trade practices and all sorts of things that, that many attorneys are already starting to look at. I mean, listen, I don't think that uh, it's a bad idea. I think that the coalition, which is essentially what you're referring to, yep. is their strength in numbers. Yep. And if this is going to you know, impact the industry at large, it makes total sense to bring folks together from the industry, industry leaders, and say enough is enough. Like, it's been a very gray area with respect to right. what's the difference between a commodity and a derivative as it relates to crypto. And Bitcoin and Ethereum are commodities, but XYZ or XRP <laughs> are derivatives, allegedly. Yeah, I understand. Here was the piece of where Brian Armstrong basically said, according to Coinbase, after initial meetings with the SEC about the product, this is in reference to the Lend mm -hmm. product, the company was told that the SEC considers Lend to involve a security, but wouldn't say why or how they had reached the conclusion. And now Coinbase has decided to pull Lend off the market. So just the conversation of the SEC saying, we think this is a security, but we don't really, we're not really going to tell you why we think that or how we think that. So here's, the, here's a couple of theories moving around out there. And I want you guys to hit us in the comments below on, on this theory. And I won't say which YouTuber gave this theory out, but it is one that I... I don't know if I would entertain it, but I, I'm definitely, I was interested in listening to it. 
And the theory was that this was a move by the SEC to essentially part, not necessarily partner up, but in collaboration with Coinbase to potentially slow down lending products from other crypto exchanges and other banking organizations. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, listen, I think that I mentioned it earlier that this is, this is precedent that the SEC is wanting to set. They want to be extremely public. They want to use a company like Coinbase as the example of what not to do as it relates to um, you know, lending, as it relates to the difference between a commodity and a derivative. Um, I think right now Coinbase has about 50 cryptos on there. And just going back to um, Gensler's statement about he is quite confident that of the 50 tokens that they have on there, mm -hmm. he's, he's pretty sure that there are uh, derivatives. Look at this. So, so this was Coinbase said the SEC would make their assessment on using two Supreme Court cases, which mm -hmm. was Howie and Reeve. This is the Howie test that many people refer to. It's a 1946 Supreme Court case, SEC versus WJ Howley. The court's final ruling created a four criteria defining investment contracts. According to the Howie test, an investment contract exists when there is investment of money in a common enterprise with the expectation of profit derived from efforts of others. Now, that's a common enterprise, meaning centralized, mm -hmm. uh, which is where decentralized projects kind of skirt around this. And that's why XRP and Ripple have kind of got this layer issue going in because there a, a lot of people look at it as a centralized project. So, But the thing about the... Um, if the, you pass it, wh why not? But also, too, I mean, this is a law that was passed in, like, 1946. 1946. Yep. So, you know, how can you apply what happened a century ago to what's happening now? The whole realm of, of digital assets is is such a new, you know, um, and, and innovative technology that it's not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. And this is why clarity is so important, which the SEC seems to, like, not want to give. Well... They go on to this point here, Reeves versus Ernst Young, and this was the 1990 Supreme Court case, which was used to decide if an instrument is a note and therefore a security. So mm -hmm. that goes back to the whole element of what LEND was. Mm -hmm. If it is a note, then it is regulated through the Securities Exchange Commission because right. it's a banking instrument. And in, if you think of that, if you look at the 1990, and we dove into the 1990 court case on this. I looked at this, read through it. They actually have a position, mm -hmm. the SEC. I mean, if the way I read In it, relation to LEND. To LEND. But beyond the scope of the LEND, sure, the fact sure. that they're talking about co coins being, you know, derivatives and kind of going above and beyond, right. the lending aspect is what I think is so disconcerting. Yeah, and I think there's two, there's two big fronts here that the SEC is fighting on. One is the security side for projects and tokens that are being offered for sale. That's you know, the XRP Ripple project. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this whole issue with the Ernst Young uh, loss, lawsuit and case where lent, well, any kind of banking instrument is considered a security. And if that is the case, it does fall under the SEC guidelines, which is what the banks have to address. So I think when it goes back to what I was saying earlier about the unnamed YouTuber that is kind of going down the direction of maybe Coinbase and the SEC dare I say, are in collaboration, that they are, and this is a maybe, mm -hmm. uh, no proof, no, this is speculation. Why would, because that's going to slow down companies like Celsius, it's mm -hmm. going to slow, now I know that Celsius actually got their security registered mm -hmm. with um, the SEC. Oh, okay. So for their lending products. Right. Uh, but you've got you know, eventually you're going to see Voyager come in, and you've got Nexo and other companies that are in well, this Well, BlockFi is already Block on fire. Fi, yep, BlockFi. So all of these are, this is such a very interesting time right now for <sighs> where this is going. But hey, do not fear because the Cuban cape is here. <laughs> and also, too, let's be honest. I mean, uh, you know, above and beyond the United States, there's a whole global market that's playing in this crypto arena. We just that, talked to one today. Exactly right. Yep. And so with that, I think, comes this, like, bullying effect, which is yep. part of why I think Bitcoin is remaining so strong. Well, and SEC, and I think, when you look at where SEC, the SEC is positioning for the United States, it used to be the SEC had a lot more global dominance mm -hmm. when they regulated within the U.S. markets. But because crypto and blockchain is such a global 
project. It's an ecosystem shift. Exactly. The SEC, I think, is feeling, I would feel. Irrelevant to some degree. Yeah, is feeling <laughs> that, wait a minute, you know, what happened to our cape? Exactly. We have no more cape here. Yeah. You know, so, but listen, Mark Cuban says Coinbase should be aggressive in engaging with the SEC and argues that the crypto industry needs exemptions like the internet got in the 1990s. What I mean, of, you know what? I can't say that I disagree. You know, I am pro innovation, and I think that you can't regulate an industry in its, you know, nascent that is like synonymous with innovation, but it will be held back with regulation. Yeah. So I just don't think those two things um, go hand in hand, and I would expect that the, you know, like legislators would recognize that we're talking about uncharted territory. They're, yeah. they're trying to apply laws that are not relevant in relation to this new technology. Right. And I think that there needs to be a paradigm shift in the government where, like, they recognize we're going to need new rules and regulations because this is a new arena. So I agree with Mark. Yeah. He, he, he said uh, here, given that the crypto industry would benefit if Coinbase, the largest crypto exchange in the U.S., went up strongly against the regulator in his comments suggested which is why it's important for Coinbase to be aggressive. So essentially, he's saying, listen, you can't let them push you around. Yep. If you do, you are essentially opening the door for all these projects to become just a, you know, a heyday and pretty much pot-shotting into the SEC with their BB guns and, you know, jumping in there. But let's not forget the one thing that Cuban did, this was in 2016, I Yeah, believe. we were talking about this case before yeah. the camera started rolling. Let's three, dive into this. Three years ago. Mm -hmm. All right, Cuban beat the securities exchange charges for insider trading. The billionaire waged basically a very public battle against the agency, so he's still pissed. Yeah. He's got, there's a you, vendetta. <laughs> a little bit of a vendetta. I'm thinking you just don't piss Cuban off. Okay, why? Why, why poke the bear? A titan of industry, yeah. you know? But that's the kind of guy that you want in your uh, in your back pocket. I mean, it's like Musk. If you poke Musk, SEC, not not a fan of Musk. Musk, not a fan of the SEC. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's a bit of a market manipulator. Yeah. So, I mean. Uh, so, I mean, but you, it's tough to poke these guys who have such social mm -hmm. gravitas because they can move not only markets. And capital. They can move <laughs> capital, and then they start to lend and push capital into legislation. Right. And eventually you see movement into government which affects the lobbying flow. So Cuban may be onto mm. something here with this. So it's going to be interesting to watch, that's for sure. Last pick, do we think Cuban partners up with Brian Armstrong on Shark Tank? <laughs> on, oh, oh, this, okay, where are we going with this one? On Shark Tank, and they have some, and they basically put out a call for, uh, for new projects to basically beat the SEC, and everybody comes in and starts pitching them. Where's my popcorn? <laughs> I'm ready for the show. <laughs> Let's go. All right, you guys heard it here first, of course. <laughs> Watch this one close, because I think this is gonna be one of those projects and, and cases, or not necessarily case, because it hasn't occurred yet, but the fact that the SEC continues to dive into it, it's gonna be interesting to see how this flows out. Listen, I'm uh, like the industry waiting with bated breath to see where this is going, but I, you know one thing I have to say, that the crypto industry is like, Holding no punches. Like, yeah. this is, I haven't seen this they level. Back. They fight back. Yeah, they we fight, fight back. back. Yeah. I mean, I called my legislator when uh, the infrastructure bill yep. came out, like, and so many of us did. And actually, I think Warren even mentioned something to that effect that, like, for a community that is decentralized, they're when awful. It... <laughs> they're awful centralized. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Congressman, uh, we had Emmer, Congressman Emmer on and here recently. You guys should check out that video because he is one of those proponents of where this is going. Mm -hmm. He is not a fan of giving the SEC more power. Neither is to me. Yeah, so there you go. All right, you guys are listening in over on the podcast right now. Make sure and, and give us some more likes. We love that kind of action. It's a great place to tune in here, of course. And of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, we're almost at 100,000 subscribers yep. thanks to you. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Share, you know, we want to make sure that everyone has access to the research that we're doing, to the analysis, the news that is driving the market. So comment below if you have anything that you want us to cover. Comment below if you have thoughts on how we're doing. I love to read the comments. The, they're always lovely. They're always lovely. Always lovely. Yeah. Uh. Hey, and by the way, uh, we are dropping some big news today uh, on the show, and that is that once we hit the 100K, we're going to try to do something special this week for the 100K, so that's going to be fun in the sense of just maybe it's some live streams and things like that. But we are launching 
something for you guys, and that is to get you guys into the Paul Barron Network and into TechPathic community called the Diamond Circle. The Diamond Circle is actually a- I wanna be in the Diamond Circle. <laughs> it's a real life, it's a real life group that we've put together. Secret society. It's a lot of big investors that we've put into a, a group. Uh, I've cleared it with all my team and they've said, you guys should really kind of extend the Diamond Circle into the Tech Path group. So you, if you're listening in or watching here on Tech Path right now, you're gonna be watching and seeing a lot more movement around this project called the Diamond Circle. We're gonna have a lot of cool things and pro programs that, and offerings for you. So stay tuned right here. If you wanna reach me, hit me up on Twitter. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.